Hi guys, welcome to Counterpoints. My name is Connor, and today we're going to be breaking down Eternal, the most recent and perhaps last installment in the Hammer and Bolter series. It is a fun, violent, well-animated, and cool entry into the series, which makes it sad that it is rumored no other Hammer and Bolter episodes are currently in production. This episode is brought to you by Ewan Racing and Hawkins and Company. Ewan Racing is a gaming and office furniture company of the highest caliber. They've been in the business for over 20 years, making ergonomically designed seats for luxury cars and office furniture boasting a variety of unique patterns and profiles, and often significantly less than other premium brands, Ewan Racing is your one-stop shop for beautiful furniture and chairs designed for professionals and gamers who spend a lot of time in the saddle. Take advantage of an awesome 20% discount by using coupon code COUNTERPOINTS at checkout, and if your back is killing you but you can't afford the purchase in one fell swoop, they offer financing options through Klarna and Afterpay. So if you're in the market, get your gaming and office table or chair today. Hawkins & Company is a veteran-owned leather-making firm using the best American-made materials to create the finest handmade wallets available. Coming in classic bifold trucker and biker builds with a variety of patterns and insignias, all made from leather sourced from one of America's last tanneries. I personally have been carrying the bifold, and I can tell you from experience you can feel the difference. Pick up your American-made piece of functional art from Hawkins & Company and use coupon code COUNTERPOINTS for 15% off now. <laughs> I can work with hatred. Free me! And, and you might yet live. We are making progress. A few more days, perhaps. One of the Neverborn. <laughs> uh, he, he fights like one. But he is no demon. He is something uh, much worse. Then he is corporeal, and so he can be killed. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, no. Do you wish to return to your purgatory, cut off from all sensations? He, he, he can be killed. 
but it does not matter. You have damned yourself by bringing me here. We are prepared for any assault by your malefic legion. No! It is not a threat. It is... I can smell death on you. On both of you. Your looming mute wreaks strongest of it. He will die first. <laughs> Castellan Domisor's vow of silence is a mark of his purity. A virtue you abandoned long ago, heretic. I thought we were past your meaningless insults. Ah, no! No more! Don't send me back! You still believe he will come for you? You think he won't find me in this fortress? We question. You answer. He will come. To save you. Do not draw steel against Lucius. His death will be the last mistake you ever make. He will be captured. And his truth taken from him. No! No! You hear, but you do not listen! Then speak no more in riddles! What is he? He is Lucius! He is blessed and cursed! He is mortal and immortal! He is eternal! He is the chosen son of the Dark Prince! Then he will be burnt to ash. I will make sure of it. Uh, <laughs> then make sure you strike from orbit and see that it's a minor servitor responsible for the kill. Unless you wish to bear his curse in turn. Enough of this. Perhaps you need more time to consider your words. No, no. Wait, wait. I, I can tell you more. Don't send me back. Don't, don't, no. <laughs> Chaplains are spiritual leaders, but also serve as interrogators of traitors and renegades. Judiciars are chaplains in training and are armed with an executioner relic blade, specifically designed for decapitating the enemy and condemned. One of the cooler details is that there are different interrogation rooms for different kinds of enemy. Cherubs and servitors stalk the halls of the fortress, likely feeding their videos to the security system. The sound dampening room and sarcophagus are a great touch for an Emperor's Children Chaos Space Marine. Emperor's Children Marines were once the most proud and loyal of the Emperor's sons. Their Primarch Fulgrim was a noble artisan, mastering everything he touched from warfare to poetry and sculpture. He gave many speeches to his marines about the pursuit of perfection, but these lessons were perverted. Many Emperor's Children Marines bounced manically between the pursuit of perfection and the belief that they were already perfect. This was a dangerous trait, as the virtue that could make you drill endlessly in hand-to-hand -hand combat, firearm, squad tactics, and strategy was the same vice that could lead to mutilation and depravity. The Emperor's Children engaged in a purge of a snake-like Xenos known as the Lair. The Marines invaded the Lair homeworld, but as they got closer to annihilating the aliens, they found the beasts in rapturous bliss. Fulgrim recovered a sword from the heart of the Lair's domain and found himself entranced, incapable of destroying it. It was later revealed that the sword was a Slaneshi demon sent to tempt Fulgrim into obsession, unknowingly worshipping the god of excess. As Fulgrim started to pursue excess in all he did, he also pushed his marines to greater and greater feats. In order to achieve those great feats, the marines underwent augmentation under the knife of Chief Apothecary Fabius Bile. One such augmentation was surgically implanting sonic technology from the lair, grafting it onto the marine's throat. This technology allowed the marines to release a shriek so powerful it could stun an enemy and even vaporize opponents within melee distance. This was the first step down the path to damnation, evolving into what would later be known as noise marines. These are Emperor's Children Legionnaires, obsessed with the cacophony of their custom weapons, capable of shredding infantry and even vehicles with sonic blasts. A few more details worth mentioning are the Emperor's Children Marine service studs have been replaced with barbs, defiling an Astartes tradition. He seems to have taken on the visage of a bat, and his nose has dozens of sensory organs meant to enhance his sensation of the world. 
The reason the sarcophagus is the perfect torture device is because an Emperor's Children Marine is obsessed with sensation, bliss, and excess over all else, and by robbing him of sight and sound, you are effectively denying him, one, what he lives for, and two, the way he worships and is empowered by his god. The enemy is Lucius the Eternal, who is neither fully a demon or just a Chaos Space Marine. Lucius is coming to the Fortress Monastery to avenge a slight against the Emperor's Children Legion, and has a plan to get in using the curse of Lucius, I will explain later. Ah, it begins. Damning me and cursing me as a traitor. Death to the traitor and the fiend! Ah, yes. There it is. Storm Raven gunship is dispatched along with the Chaplain, Judiciar, and some veterans of the Exorcist chapter. The Exorcists are demon hunters of the highest caliber. They expose their initiates to warp entities early in their training, resulting in higher than average casualties in their recruits. For Astartes, this is impressive since the training losses are already abominably high. In order to become an Exorcist Marine, one has to be possessed by a demon that is then cast out. This makes the Marines that survive almost immune to the temptations of chaos and demonic possession. The Emperor's Children Marines, however, make quick work of their comparatively young Primaris Brethren, which is horrifying in that it shows you that you can be a 200-year veteran of dozens of campaigns, survive demonic possession, and yet you can still be dispatched by a lunatic high on warp dust. While the Exorcists are slow by comparison, they do use several tactics to try to take Lucius and his companions. They attack from multiple directions, they keep a reasonable distance that should give them the advantage in firepower. They harass with their gunship while trying to bring down their enemies. One Marine in particular tries to flush a Chaos Marine with a grenade and a prepared ambush position, only to eat a plasma charge to the chest. The Chaos Terminator is tough enough to absorb the punishment and bring down some of the Marines, while the Chaos Marine with a plasma pistol just uses cover, speed, and even a feint to bring down his opponents. Lucius himself is a blur of speed, blades, and tentacles, ripping apart his opponents besides the Chaplain and Judiciar, 
which is only punctuated by the fact that he predicts the chaplains will smack talk him before engaging in battle. It looks like there is a sequence missing showing the Chaos Marines taking the gunship, but for the sake of expediency and understanding how difficult animation is, I'll give it a pass considering the rest of the delicious violence. Just as a killing blow is dealt by Lucius, the Judiciar uses a Tempo Mortis, an arcane device that disrupts time, to stop Lucius in his steps and disembowels him. In order to try to avoid the curse of Lucius, the chaplain burns the body with a combi weapon, a pyre blaster strapped to a bolt rifle. Lucius was and is the master duelist in the Warhammer setting. Garaville Loken, a principal character in the early Horus Heresy novels, is the only pre-Heresy opponent to beat him in a duel and does so by punching him in the face at an unexpected moment. Lucius is humiliated by this loss, is unable to fix his broken nose, and chafes at being called quote-unquote too pretty to be a serious warrior. To pursue martial perfection while sacrificing his beauty, Lucius begins cutting victories into his body. Originally a part of the surviving Loyalists after the Isfan 3 virus bombing, Lucius betrayed his Loyalist brothers to rejoin the traitors. Lucius became a favored bodyguard of Fulgrim and followed him through the Horus Heresy. Lucius followed his Primarch into the Eye of Terror and became a champion of the Slaneshi Coliseum. When he was finally defeated in battle, Slaanesh could simply not let go of one of her favorite toys. Slaanesh created the Curse of Lucius, meaning that if anyone kills Lucius and takes pride in that fact, they will become possessed by him. Lucius wears Battle Plate, the prison of those who have fallen to the curse. He wields the Layer Blade, the demonic sword responsible for his Primarch's fall, a demonic whip, and a custom-built combat drug dispenser, one in the Dark Eldar city of Kamra. The Judiciar, while training with the Servitors, even for a single unguarded moment, relish that he was strong enough to kill Lucius, and in doing so, damned himself with the curse.
You found me. <laughs> oh, I'd die to find you. Do you remember the last thing you said to me, old friend? I... No. I... You said you are a joke to our legion, and a bad one at that. I... I... I, I didn't mean... It bothered me, Jesus. It vexed me terribly. <laughs> Disappointingly bitter. I'm done with this place. Come get me. It's about time. I can finally leave this tedious rock. Then clear out the fortress. We'll meet you outside. Lucius is revealed not to be saving the Emperor's Children Marine, but instead avenging a personal slight. A very Emperor's Children and Lucius thing to do. He kills Janus in the most grueling of ways, driving his blade slowly down the Marine's throat and into his innards, causing an excruciating death. For a veteran Slaneshi worshipper, though, even this is not enough. Lucius escapes and relishes torturing the chaplain before killing him, showing once again that you can be a demigod of war, but in the grim dark future of the 40th millennium, there is always something crueler than you. Which brings us to the end for now. If you like my breakdowns, like, share, and subscribe, and ring the bell so you can see whenever new content drops. Comment down below and feel free to fight it out in the comment section below over lore and narrative interpretations. If you can't think of anything to say, then type in comment for the comment gods. I'll salute you in real life with an Aquila, but I will reply with an 07 in the comment section saluting you for your service. Become a YouTube or Patreon member to help support the channel or check out our sponsors. I appreciate you. I'll catch you in the next one. Until the end. Also, I'm not going to be mad if you check out the Hell's Reach series, a classic but phenomenal animation. Special thanks to Hawkins & Company Leather Wallets, Robin, Wookie Oreo, Thomas Carroll, Vincent Louis, Dr. Pink Pill, John C., Kristoff, Blue, Ramiro Gallegos, Nick Chitanava, Matthew Jones Carter, Kevin Rabb, Weeble666, Abigail Shane, Leo, That Rye Guy, Auspician, Lesser, Garbage, Colbius, Christian Stafford, Fearmonger, Ellis Hayward, Driz, Ah Medicine, Miles, Keo Deos Fetas, Thomas Jones, Thomas Concepts, Colum, Pull Up a Couch, Orca, Chris Alberti, Joseph Moran, Yahweh, Ethrel, Chad Griffin, Chris Williams, Pig Jolt, Runon, Trubaldor Happenstansky, CC Supporter, Clinton Miller, Satya Avatara, Omni, Christian Valeris, Moon, Timothy, and Gassine.